Praise the Lord. God is good, isn't he? Amen. Yes, he is. Amen. And we're so grateful to God for the distance that we've come this morning. We're excited about the word of God and uh, what he's going to bless us with. So without further ado, say amen for our pastor, Pastor Blaine. Thank you. Thank you. We started a series last week, and the title of the series was The Journey. The Journey. Um, I know we had a great vacation, a great, great trip. Uh, I think it was Lady Deborah, maybe about two or three years ago, we drove to Chicago. And I can remember, it was just Lady Deborah, myself, and my grandson, little Jeremy. But I can remember after about eight hours, I can remember stopping at a convenience store or something to get some water or something. And little Jeremy just looking up at us like, are we there yet? <laughs> it was, you know, it's, it's, the further back I go, the sweeter that he was. And the farther I come this way, you know. <laughs> but it was just so sweet. He was like, are we there yet? And, and it's kind of, that's kind of like the journey of life, the journey of life. Um, I'm coming to believe, uh, coming to see Brother Lacey, that humility is a wonderful thing. Yes, sir. But it takes time to get there. Yes, sir. And so, Gammon, it, it can't be where I'm just acting like I have humility, I'm acting like I'm humble. Humility comes from a state of your heart. Sooner or later, and you know, let me give you just an example, maybe all of us, Brother Jeff, can understand, even in relationships, a man and a woman get together, and you know, y'all might even go so far as to get married. And somewhere down the line, you wanna find out this Negro ain't who I thought he was. He crazy. <laughs> and then you're really hurt, Sister Annie Bailey, if somebody already told you, you don't need to marry, he crazy. But you did not believe it. And then when you see it yourself, you're so shamed because you wouldn't listen to anybody. The journey. Yeah. Uh, we come to find out, Lady Deborah, that it's not a sprint, right. but it's a marathon. Right. Uh, uh, Jesus said, he that endured to the end, the same should be saved. Now, he was not talking about us. We do not have to endure to the end in order to be saved. We're saved by the blood that Jesus shed on Calvary's cross. And so then, when we believe unto righteousness, Madeline, when we can believe, when God gives us faith, to believe that what Jesus did on the cross paid the sin debt, when we believe that, then the Spirit of God uh, baptizes us into the body of Christ. Ephesians and Colossians tells us that when he was crucified, we, was, we were crucified. The Bible says by two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Uh, I got more Bible on it. Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. And so then if you are in the body of Christ, even though in 29 AD, they did not take you up a hill called Golgotha, even though they did not put the Roman spikes in your uh, wrist and in your uh, uh, ankles, Yet, God counts you as it was you who died in order that you might be resurrected in the newness of life. I used to think before I got over here and got a little better teaching, I used to think it was very, brother, I used to think, brother Coleman, that it was very hard of God for God to say that without faith it's impossible to please me. Because I had been raised up up upon a very legalistic and a very performance-oriented uh, religion. I was told that if you paid your dues, if you came to church regularly, I was told if you read your Bible, I was told if you went to prayer meeting, I was told that if you had good behavior, then God was, you know, God actually God owed you something. Because look, God, look how good I've been and look what I've done. But, but I come to find out that the only thing that pleases God is what his son did on Calvary's cross. Amen. Come to find out that all my righteousness is as filthy rags. And that only God, what he does, is what he accepts. 
Come to find out that I must put my faith and trust completely in God and not in myself. Not in myself. Uh, what, what, did I give you a scripture yet? Let me see if I can give you one then so you'll be all right. Romans, let's, let's try Romans, uh, the fifth chapter. Romans 5 and 1, the Bible says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith unto this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. Look at your neighbor, look them right there in the eyes and just ask them, say, are we there yet? Are, are we there yet? In, 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 in this journey, I'm so glad to be at church with some real folk today. Because, you know, it's about four or five of us, we're going through hell and high water. But we know how to play it off so good. We look so good while we're going. We learned how to keep a smile on our face, even when we're crying inside. You say, well, pastor, that's phony. Well, it's not really phony, you see. Because the Bible tells me, uh, Brother Davis, he says, cast not away, therefore your confidence, which has great recompense yeah. of reward. And so God, God admonishes me that no matter what I'm going through, to keep my confidence in God. Yeah. Have you been through enough yet to know that God can pull you up out of any ditch? Yeah. That no matter how bleak it may seem, no matter how the storms are raging, that's the reason it's good, Mother Bland, to have some seasoned saints around. That's the reason that it's good. And Paul told, told Timothy, he said, don't let a, a youth be a bishop. You, you, you need a little experience. I know, you, I know you know the scriptures. And I know you was the president of the Sunday school and all that. But baby, you need to walk with him for a while. You, you, you need some storms. That's the reason uh, Vanna Jr., sometimes people will ask me, I think a uh, uh, Corman asked me when he got married, he said, well, Pastor, what advice do you have? I looked down. <laughs> and Brother Lace, I just looked him in the eye and told him, I said, son, I can't help you. <laughs> I said, you're going to have to hit this journey for yourself. <laughs> am, am I telling the truth? We, you, you're going to have to hit this journey right here for yourself. Because there's going to be some time, boy, that you're going to want to throw this stuff out the door. And you got to walk on, but you got to hold on to the horns of the altar. Huh? Now, one good thing that I got from the church I came from, they had a song. They said, I made a vow to the Lord. And I won't take it back. And the scripture even said, it's better not to make a vow than, than to keep it. Are we there yet? You see, the problem in the world, we think that the problem is hunger, we think that the problem is teenage pregnancy, we think the problem is youth violence, and, and I, will, I, I will grant you that all of that is a problem. But that's not the root of it. You see, you got to get down to the root, the causes and condition. Why is the world like it is today? And why is it that no matter how much money you make, why is it that, okay, you get what you want, but you still ain't happy. Yeah, you know, you, have you ever been to this place where I man, I just want that car, I want that car. And you know that car gonna take every dime that you got, but you just want that car. And you go get that car, CJ, and I'm gonna tell you what, and within a month you won't even wash it, it's just a car. It's just a car. What is the frustration, and Solomon talks about the vanity of it. And you have to stay inspired. You have to stay motivated in, in, in order not only for yourself, but be able to be a blessing to other people. Are we there yet? Have you ever had something, Crystal, that you really had a passion for and it really excited you and you did it for so long and you got burnt out and you just really didn't even want to fool with it no more? That's the reason that Solomon says vanity. It's a whole vanity. What gives meaning to our life? Because in order to stay inspired and to make this journey, uh, Lady Deborah and I, June the 11th, we'll be married 40 years. God, I would clap for you, but that's all right. 
And I used to take the position, Demetrius, I used to take the position because I'd be halfway shamed because I know how I brought a monk out and act during the 40 years that I would put a disclaimer on it and I said, well, you know, yeah, but you know, all of it ain't been sunshine and all that, you know, and everything. God told me, he said, shut up. He said, it ain't supposed to be all sunshine. Are we there yet? You know, <laughs> if I remember talking to a guy one night when I was in law school and we were leaving a meeting, I said, now y'all getting ready to go home, but I got to go home and read books this thick and I'm gonna be up half the night. You know, and I don't know if I wanted sympathy from him or what, Farrah, but he, he looked at me right there and I, and he, and he told me, he said, well, Vanda, you know, if it was easy, everybody would do it. If it was easy, everybody would have it. And so on this journey, I have to understand that God is going to take me through each trial and each tribulation. But in order to make it through the journey, I have to have my mindset and understand what's going on. The Bible is about the arresting or the putting down of rebellion. The whole world is in rebellion against God. Do you know folks ain't studying God? I ain't talking about folks outside the church. I'm talking about folks in the church. Right. Folks in the church. I ain't thinking about God. I better not ask you why you didn't come to church because I didn't come. <laughs> hey, rebellion. Rebellion means that the fact that I'm going to do what I want to do. Rebellion. And God calls for, in this journey, total surrender. What do you mean by total surrender, Pastor? What I mean is, is that somewhere down the line, I have to come to the understanding that I ain't nobody and you everything. But it takes a long time to get there. I want to use some people as an example today in this teaching. Uh, come here, Robert. I'm going to use you as God because you know if God this black he love all of us come on <laughs> stand right here I ain't studying y'all I got to be here I'm gonna have some fun I don't care what y'all say the Bible says that in the beginning God created heaven and earth I'm gonna use my son as heaven come on that's heaven his heaven right over here. Stand right there. Heaven and earth. You stand right there. And so here's earth. You sit right back. You sit right there. So in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Now, how do you think God created heaven and earth? They were perfect, wasn't they? There was no trouble. There was nothing. There. What happened to heaven and earth? Heaven and earth. And so now, in heaven, come here, Brother Arthur. Kennedy and Roma, y'all come here. I need one more child. Is there another one? No small. Well, Brian, you come on. You have to work. So now, here's heaven and here's earth. And who are you? Huh? In the beginning, God came. Oh, I know who you are. Heaven and earth. This is Lucifer. <laughs> I'm a prophet, ain't I? I know. I <laughs> Heaven and earth, and now here you have Lucifer right here. Now he's the head of the choir. He is beautiful. He is, and you live long enough to know that everything that look good to you ain't good for you. You don't go for ugly stuff. It ain't nothing ugly that got you. Mm-hmm. It ain't nothing ugly that got you. Mm-hmm. I preached a sermon one time saying, what I, what, it's what I love that's killing me. It ain't what you hate, it's what you love that's killing you. And so Lucifer was a beautiful creation and God created heaven and earth. That's in Genesis 1 and 1. Everything was wonderful about how God created it. Everything he made was good. And so now here Lucifer is in heaven. It's recorded in Isaiah and in Ezekiel. He was the anointed cherub that was beauty. But what happened was iniquity was found in him. What was the iniquity? What is man's trouble? Man's trouble is, is that he don't understand that he ain't nothing and God is everything. 
the only thing problem with man is, is that he wants to take God's place. You ever been on a job where you had a guy that was there that did not know he wasn't the boss? You don't have no problem as long as the day goes smooth, if everybody do their job and stay in their place, but you got one rascal that's up in there that want to try to tell everybody what to do. He been that long than everybody else, but he ain't got no promotion, he ain't got nothing. And where does that come from? That comes from right here. That comes from the heart. And that's reading David in the psalm. He said, God created me a pure heart. I tell y'all all the time that ain't a dime worth of difference between us, but it is. And the difference is, it's our heart. That's our heart. Now the same foolishness, the same lust is found in all of us. Now, Tiffany, we can act like you got some folks, especially if you're a doctor or a lawyer or whatever, you got enough money to try to kind of hide your stuff, the, the tailor-made suits. And, you know, let me get I like to use examples where people can, you, can understand it. Most of us got a stomach. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. I ain't talking about no pretty stomach either. But some of us know how to hide it better than others. <laughs> we know you don't wear nothing real tight across here where you can see every roll and y'all got the picture now. But you know whether you can hide it or not, you still got it. That's right. And one of these days it's gonna show up. That's right. What happened was iniquity was found in him. Even as beautiful as he was, it was something within him that caused him to rebel against God. Now God ain't done nothing to nobody. God love everybody and God is so, but you turn and you rebel against God. Why would you rebel against God? You rebel against God because you want to come up here equal with God. You want to be equal with God. You better watch that spirit. You better watch that because that right there is the beginning of your downfall. The moment that you won't accept that God, you are ever get back right. Like he was doing good. You ever notice that in your life? Long as you put God in the position he's supposed to be in your life, you know. But the moment that you're not satisfied with God, with, with letting God be God, and you decide you want to come up here and be equal with God, one writer said, "I saw him fall from heaven like lightning." Now, the thing about uh, being around foolishness is is that. Not only are they going to be foolish, but they're going to try to persuade other folks to go with them. So the book of Jude says that he took a third of the angels with him. Now here heaven is. Heaven is pure. He's got angels that there that's a certain, that are bowing before him, uh, giving him all the honor and the glory. But now all you got to have is one person. Yeah. Just one. Yeah. one person. Just one. That's one person. We've been here almost 15 years, and y'all said, ooh, look like things go so smooth around here. I've had to clean the house a few times. You didn't know it, because I didn't bring it before the church. That's right. But I told folks, don't, uh-uh, you don't come back no more. You don't, you don't have, because I'm going to tell you what, whenever God begin to bless, it don't take but one person. And they, what they do, they go from person to person, causing a mess. It can't be but one pastor at a time. If you have an aspiration to be a pastor, that's good, but not while I am. And I don't have to stand up and tell, I'm the pastor. If you got to stand up and tell somebody that's what you are, something is wrong. And you do it in order so that the rest of the people can be blessed because you can't come here when there's confusion and foolishness that's going on. And so Lucifer caused confusion in heaven. So heaven got messed up because of one. And what he did, Jew said, he took a third of the angels with him. Take Kennedy with you. He took, <laughs> he took a third of the angels with him. So now, heaven is not the beautiful place that it was. And, and now heaven has been tainted. Now heaven has uh, uh, experienced rebellion. Now heaven is... is do, do you remember when your children were small and y'all could, you know, when y'all got ready to go somewhere, it wasn't ever no problem. See, so we're going to see grandmama. Okay, they'd be smiling and laughing and whatever. But when they got rebellious, 
When they got rebellious, walking around the house like they mad all the time. And you mad too, cause you feeding them. <laughs> Ain't nothing like feeding somebody that's acting foolish. <laughs> and they be thinking they hurting you, talking about, I can't wait to leave. I wish I could give you a ticket today. <laughs> You're causing problems. You causing problems. We was happy until you started. <laughs> we was a family until you got rebellious. You, you calling all the problem up in here. <laughs> so God still has two, two thirds of the angels, but, but, but now heaven has been tainted. Okay? Now, but God created heaven and earth. And so now you have the earth over here. Okay? This is heaven? Where earth at? Thank y'all, I'm 63. <laughs> Huh? That's God and that's heaven. All right, I got you. You know what? Y'all paying attention. That's why I did that, wasn't it? So I see y'all. So here the earth is. Stand up. And so God on the earth there, God creates the earth and everything is, is fine. But then by the second or third verse, he says that there was darkness upon the earth and there was chaos. And God came in and he had to speak everything over again. They said, let there be light. And there was light. And then, then God decided that he would put man there. Come here, brother David. He puts man there. And he puts man there to dress and keep the earth. He made it for man. But now what happened was man was doing fine. And, but it looked like he was like, said, not good for him to be alone. Come on, woman. <laughs> so he puts him to sleep, and out of him comes a woman. And out of this woman and everything, that's when his trouble started. Uh -huh. I know you want to look at somebody and say, that's when mine started too. <laughs> but that's all right. That's all right. I bet you can't make it without him. <laughs> I bet you can't make it without him. So now... Satan comes. Well, Lucifer, there you are. Now, this is the thing about it is, is that we fight not against prop, uh, 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 flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities. Spiritual wickedness in high places. Uh -huh. So now he has messed up heaven. Okay. So here he comes, going to mess earth up. Uh -huh. Everything that God does, he's getting ready to make a mess out of it. He's going to make put everything up against rebellion against God. Because now he wants to be God. And so everything that God has, heaven and earth, he's going to try to turn it against God. So he's turned heaven against God. Now he comes down here to earth. Now God has only told them, so you don't need to know the difference between good and evil. I, I got you. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to uh, feed you. All of your emotional needs, everything that you need, I'm going to take care of it. As a matter of fact, in the cool of the evening, I'm going to come down and talk with you. I'm, I'm going I'm to your mind. Because you see, the greatest battle every one of us is having right now is right here. Yeah. It's right here. If your mind is right, then your life is right. But if your mind ain't right, I don't care what kind of car you're driving. I don't care what kind of money you got in your pocket and whatever. I'm walking around, I had $1,000 the other day and just as depressed as I could be. Thank you, Jesus if your mind not right. So then Satan comes to the woman. You see, because he know that if he gets to the woman, the man gonna follow right behind. Uh -huh. Now, he said he was more, he got in the serpent, the serpent was the most subtle beast that it was. So he gonna slide up to you, he's not gonna come direct to you. And he asked you what did God say and everything. And then he told him, said, no. He said, you don't have to do what God said. You can rebel. Now you don't call rebellion in heaven, now you're causing rebellion in earth because I'm going to destroy everything that God has done. And so now the woman disobeys God, that ain't caused nothing, you see, because she got deceived and she's not the head, the man is the head. And so until the man goes along with her, then everything is still fine. And see, the man wasn't deceived. He just went along because the man made a decision to follow her instead of following God. But she was deceived. 
And that's the reason no matter how smart your woman is and no matter how good she is and all that, you still make the last decision in the house because God is the head of Christ. Christ is the head of man. Man is the head of woman. Ain't nothing like when you got a man that's letting a woman run the things. Everything, it'll run, wow. but it's messed up. Yes. I know I said something. That's why it got quiet. <laughs> Y'all want a woman president and everything. That's all right. Anyway, so now, man, because he has rebelled against God, you, you can have a seat. Because Satan, Satan, you done done your job. You can sit down now. So now, you the earth, right? All right, you sit down too. So now, you got man and woman that's in rebellion against God. You got heaven that's in rebellion against God. Man has to be driven out of the garden because he said, I can't let them eat of the tree of life because if they do, then they will, they, they, they will stay in this state forever. Let me say this right here. We hate death. We hate death. But there's no way to get to a better state except through death. Through death. We want to stay over here on this side in all this misery. We sit around and complain about life all the time, but let it, let it look like life in the leaves. Mm -hmm. Let it look like life. We'll fight to the end, no matter how miserable it is, is because but Paul caught the vision and Paul said, really, it's better for me to go be with Christ. He said, but for your sake. And so then, God, you have a reason to stay over here in order to help other people, but actually your reward is on the other side. There's no reward over here. So now you got man and woman that's all messed up. Okay, y'all go sit down. So now how in this journey do we get out of this state? Come here, my brother. This brother Gray right here. God bless you. Good to see you, brother Gray. So now, God says in Genesis 3 and 15, he says, that's all right. I got a plan. You see, the devil played checkers and God played chess. The devil thought if I cause rebellion in heaven and earth, then man will be lost forever. Mm -hmm. then, I, then I have won. But God already had a plan. Paul says in 1 Corinthians, I think it was the second chapter, he said, if the prince of this world had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Yeah. Well, you ain't got to take that. Look at your own life. Come on. Look at how that God tricked the devil. Uh -huh. The trouble that you had, you would not be as strong as you are now. You would, it, ain't, it ain't too much that even bother you no more. When the money get funny and the strain get changed, you ain't really worried about it. You say, baby, God got some more money. You encouraging folks that got money and tell them, say, baby, God is going to make a way out of some way. So in Genesis 3.15, God has a plan, and God says, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the seed of the woman. Now, a woman does not naturally have a seed, but man's seed has been corrupted. Put a pen right there. Whenever you, something in your life has been corrupted, you ever been to the place where you thought you done messed up beyond repair? When I got kicked out of three universities and been in jail in every town and everything, I thought my dream to be an attorney was over. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't. It wasn't over. It wasn't over. But God used that in order to form me. Whether I never look down on nobody, no matter what shape that they in. I know that you are not beyond repair. I know that wherever your life is, my God is strong enough to bring you up out of that. You just need faith in God. My report came back with 53 F's on my transcript. Talking about you gonna get in law school and you'll be alive. God showed me, God showed me that it makes no difference what man says. It's not over until I see. So the picture looks dim on this journey where you have um, heaven and earth have been corrupted, but God says, I'm gonna take the seed of a woman. Now how's a woman gonna have a seed? Because the man has the seed. When they do a blood test, uh, the, the blood is in the man's seed. They, they don't get the blood from the woman. It comes from the man. But now, uh, Isaiah says in 7 and 14 says, a woman, a virgin, she don't know no man. But a virgin is going to be overshadowed by the Holy Ghost, and I'm going to have a child through a virgin. And he's going to be called Emmanuel, God with us. That's what you're saying, Pastor. What I'm saying is, is that whatever is going to be worked out, God got to work it out. God said, quit looking to man. David said, look, I'm going to look to the hill. Do you 
realize that your answer didn't come until you stopped looking to folk? Until you quit waiting on... <laughs> My relationship with God didn't ever get to be nothing until I stopped looking to the pastor. Until I stopped looking to the church. Until I stopped looking to the bishop. When I look to the one who saved me, when I look to the one who sits high and looks low, then God himself straightened my life up. So now he says, the woman, the seed of the woman, she's going to come and, and you're going to bruise his heel, but he's going to crush your head. We can have a seat. So now the seed of the woman has been promised. But now, angels come down in Genesis the fifth chapter and have sex with women, and they have giants upon the land. And the whole mankind look like they corrupted. So how is the seed of the woman gonna come through a corrupted land? But the Bible says that God found grace, Noah found grace because Noah's land was still pure. So he took those eight people that were still pure and put them on a boat and drowned everybody else. But when he got, when he got up on the mountain right there, he got drunk. And so it wasn't no different. So what does God do? Man has rebelled. And so what does God do? Let me see who I can find now. Come here, CJ. For what God decides to do now. In order... You had three lines. You had Ham, Shem, and Japheth. Ham was the darker race. Shem was the Asiatic. Japheth was the European. The seed was to come through Shem. And so a, a descendant of Shem was a man down in the uh, uh, Arab Chaldees by the name of Abram, which came to be known Abraham. He told Abraham, I'm going to make a covenant with you, Abraham. And through you all, the nations of the world are going to be blessed. So he used Abram. You can go back and sit down. He used Abram in order to bless all of the world that, that the seed would come down through Abram. Who came after Abraham? Isaac, right? Now, watch this. He takes Abram and tells Abram, uh, you're going to have a child. He waits 25 years till they can't do anything in order to show that it's going to be done. I'm the one that's going to do it. So they have Isaac, and Isaac has Jacob, and Jacob has the 12 uh, patriarchs, and those 12 tribes uh, through them, but the one is named Judah. Judah is the one through which the seed of the woman will come, uh, Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so Christ Jesus comes, the Bible says, in the fullness of time, that Christ comes in order to destroy the works of the enemy. Mm -hmm. Y'all can have y'all seat. Y'all can have y'all seat. So... Let me go back to Romans 5, and I got about, about 10 minutes. Y'all still with me? So look what the Bible says here in Romans 5 and 3. He says, and not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope maketh not ashamed. And so what I have to understand, Mother Bland, went through all that to just to show you. What I have to understand is, is that there is a plan that's in place in my life. And when I, Brother Gray, look back over my life, and what I have to do is get rid of self-consciousness and become Christ-conscious. Because you see, the greatest hindrance to people getting delivered and the greatest hindrance to people finding grace to help is is embarrassment and shame. You see, everybody in here, and I won't say everybody, but there's some people in here that are going through something right now that if you could just tell somebody, it, it would ease the burden off of you. But you are ashamed and you are afraid that if folk knew who you really was, and if folk knew what you was going through, then they would look funny at you because Tiffany, we have got to the place, even at church, that we whisper and we do this and we do that, do that and everything. And then that's the reason that, uh, where Vander Jr. at? He walked out, but anyway, that's for another night. I just told, I just announced to the church, I said, well, Tiffany, I mean, uh, 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 Tish and Vander Jr.'s divorce was final on Monday. Okay? So, so you don't, you know, you might not have heard it, you might not, but then all that are whispering and I wonder what, it ain't none of your business. 
you know, and that's when you put it, put it down. Now, what you gonna do with it? Take it and do, we've got to get past, we got to get past embarrassment in order to help people. The same thing that happened to you. Yeah. <laughs> Lady Deborah and I have been in the divorce. We've been to the, uh, uh, we've been to the lawyer's office. I was so crazy, I typed up the papers, wrote the, wrote, wrote the check, did a waiver, and did all that. I had Cleo to do that at the office and everything. Cleo looked at me, she said, you don't lost your mind. <laughs> Let me tell you something, you, you, th that rebellion, look at somebody and say, are we there yet? Let me, let me tell you something. You don't know what this journey is going to entail. And I just made up my mind. One thing, CJ, I can't, one thing I can't afford to carry is walking around thinking about what you think about me. One thing I can't afford, that right there don't help nothing. Me worrying about how you feel. I got to get over me and get over who I want you to think that I am. And I've got to, like that woman that had the issue of blood, she's been bleeding for 12 years. You see, when you get enough trouble, when things get serious enough with you, you can say what you want to say. And here these people are telling the woman, say, don't bother the master. Well, you see, Jesus was on his way somewhere else. Jair Jairus was a man that had money. And Jairus had come and he said, my daughter is sick. So he on his way to see about Jairus. But that woman with the issue of blood, she didn't care where he was going. Do you remember the day you got saved? You didn't care what the folk thought. You didn't care how they look funny upside your head or uh, whatever. She, I'm not going any further. I need him right now. Whatever folk think about me, I know that God is real and I know what I need from him. I'm going to get it today. I ain't going to let you go until you bless me. I know what I need. Yeah. Let, let me tell you something. Usually for a mother, it's, where, it's one of her children in, in, in problem. Yeah. I know right now that that lady never leave me for any one of them nappy head boys. <laughs> <laughs> and she doing something what they're doing like this right here. At one time, CJ, one of them needed about $17,000. And they didn't know if I had the money or not. I had it. I had it. But I walk around the house, Fairy Dean, just, you know, like, I'm not finna get this nick for my money. <laughs> and mama walk around the house like a sick milk cow. And I'm like, this right here. After about the second day, I just went out, I just, I said, here, buddy. I just took the money and threw it up under the house. I said, here, hit him. You know what she said? She said, you want something to eat, baby? <laughs> we didn't get serious enough. I'm going to come here this morning for you to look at me and talk about, ooh, he sure did preach. We don't went to church enough and talk about how to preach or preach. I need some help. And what I need some help with, preacher, I don't, I don't expect you to pay my light bill or nothing. I need some help with my thinking. Because I'm caught somewhere between homicide and suicide. Folks don't really know who you're sitting by. You don't know who you're sitting by. Thank you, Jesus. Are we there yet? And it can go on so long, mother. And so Paul says here, I'm almost through. Paul says here, because I understand that I'm justified by faith, because I understand that God, uh, through his son, has put down rebellion, because I understand that now I'm in right standing with God, uh, I've got to have patience. I've got to have some patience. And see, Renee, I can remember sitting in my little office, and you know, folk can try to make you feel bad, Pharaoh, about where you at. Right. You can't do me like that now. Right. Mm -mm. I proudly tell them what my nickname is. When I pledged uh, Omega Sci-Fi, my, my nickname wasn't one of them great names like q -rific and what it would have done, all that kind of stuff like that. My nickname was Fleabag. <laughs> my nickname was Fleabag. And even uh, when I was getting ready to go to law school, uh, my job was, and that's the reason I, I feel sorry for you when you're in college and you got to have this and got to have that. You ain't going nowhere. You want to live like you're rich while you're in college. You got to put off. Paul says, look at Paul says that I reckon that these present sufferings, are we there yet? 
I reckon that these present suffering are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed. It's called delayed gratification. You'll never get anywhere until you're willing to suffer right now. I'm on my Are we there yet? But when you got to have everything right now, you in college, you got to drive the best car, you got to wear the best clothes and whatever. Uh Uh-uh. I had the more raggedy jeans on, and my job was, Vanna Jr. didn't know it, my job was to go by and pick up the other folk books and everything. I'm serving the people and whatever. And you know, everybody, you know, the folks I was working with, man, they love me, Brother Lacey. Oh, man, you this and you that. They didn't know it, though. I was on my way somewhere. I realized that we ain't there yet. It does not yet appear what we shall be. But when we see him, we shall be as it is. Sometimes people sleep on you because they look at you right now, and they think that you ain't got nothing. We ain't seen Sam Walter. We say, who is this old bum right here driving an old truck and whatever? But he had a master plan. I can retail. I can sell stuff. And I can sell it at a cheaper price. And I can sell more of it. And now, what is it? One of the richest folks in the world. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? And so, what I must understand is, is that when I was in, I can remember sitting in my little study. What time is it? I got two minutes. I can remember sitting in my little study, CJ. And people can make you feel so bad because one of the law students, she was married to a doctor. And she came over to my house, you know. When she came to my house, Brother Lacey, we was supposed to be studying or doing something. And this is what she said, Farrah. She said, oh. She said, this, this little house is a little bigger than I thought it was from outside. Call yourself little, you know what I mean? Your little house. Now I had a little study that I was, and then I would go in there studying, and I would be in there studying, and uh, I listened at a Georgia Mass Choir saying joy. And this thought here came to me, Tara. I said, you know what? They don't know about me now, but they gonna know about me. They gonna know about me. Are we there yet? You got to trust God. You got to trust God. Let me tell you something. I'm getting ready to end. But what I'm telling you is, is that God got a plan for your life. And you ain't got to be everything today. But just start working on your dreams. Start, start doing what you need to do. And quit worrying about what folk looking at you and how they think about you. Because the same folk that putting you down and thinking you ain't nobody and you ain't got nothing, them the same folks that'll come to you trying to borrow something. Not, not many days. Not many days on. Oh, they laughed at us. I'm finna curse. They laughed at us. I ain't talking about folks outside the family, Tyrone. I'm talking about folks in our family. They laughed at us. They talked about my mama. They said, she didn't have but five children, but they, you know, she got all them children. Daddy drunk. Staying in a trailer house. They laughed at us. But see, they didn't know what they were teaching us up there in that trailer house. Out of that trailer house come what? Three, three doctors. I, I, out of that trailer house. Every one of them got money but me. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> you, got, you got two or three millionaires that's, that's up in there. You know, I ain't going to tell you which one of them, but the one of them told me the other day, said, Man, I got more money than I ever will spend. I said, Lord, I'd like to have a heart attack. <laughs> I done heard about that, but I ain't never talked to nobody that told me I got more money than I ever will spend because I don't spend money like that. But you know what? (laughs) If you can keep your head, are we there yet? Why are you on the journey? When you can see the vision of where God is taking you. Your marriage may not be what you think it ought to be right now, but get a vision of it. Your income may not be what? It is now. You see? My baby son, and I'm closing. Three or four years ago, him and his son were living in the back room at my house. (laughs) I have to remind him of it sometime. Just a few years ago, you were staying in my house back there. Grown man in the 30s. Yeah. But now you think, you know, build almost a million dollar house in Benton. Uh Uh-huh. That's right. Are we there yet? 
Enjoy the journey. Knowing, Pharaoh, I don't think there's nothing that God ever made that's too good for me. I don't think it's nobody that's any better. I'm just one poor little person in my law firm. And I done gone up against people, man. They in the high rise. They, they, they lawyers. They got all floors. And all of them, I went in there and whooped them just like they wasn't nobody. Are we there yet? You got to know that you know that you know. That God, I ain't there yet. And I ain't ashamed that I ain't got nothing now. And I can, I can bless you and I can talk about and, and be happy for you for what you got. But mine is coming. Amen. Clap your hands for the Lord.